Hi, I'm Tammy Yoho, and I'm an instructional designer here at Lindsay Wilson College. I also occasionally teach communication courses, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk briefly about the two silent aspects of leadership. The secret ingredients of effective leadership may not be what you would expect. We often think of leaders as speakers, and leaders do need to be able to communicate clearly. However, as a leader, you want others to hear you. There are two silent skills that must be mastered for this to happen. Effective communication for leadership hinges on the ability to actively listen and utilize nonverbal communication. To start, I want to address a common myth about listening. Many people believe that if a person is born with the ability to hear, then listening must be a natural ability. In truth, people are not born with good listening skills. There is a distinct difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is a sensory process by which we perceive sounds in our environment. If you have the ability to hear, you cannot help but hear the sounds around you. Listening, on the other hand, requires higher level brain activity. Listening requires attention and cognitive processing, which result in understanding. That is why listening is a skill that can be strengthened with practice, just like any other skill. Sometimes it is difficult for us to assess our own listening skills accurately. Stephen Sample, author of The Contrarian's Guide to Leadership, wrote that the average person suffers from three delusions. One, that they are a good driver. Two, that they have a good sense of humor. And three, that they are a good listener. As you know, there are, these are very subjective self-assessments. It may help us to honestly answer the following questions. Do you ever pretend to be listening when you're not? I must say that college students are particularly good at this. Do you know how to sit in class and look like you're listening attentively when you're actually thinking about something else? Do you do that a lot? Keep in mind that you can become just as good at not listening as you can become at listening. Whichever you practice more is the skill you will strengthen. Do you ever tune people out when their ideas seem boring or complex? Remember, hearing is not the same as listening. You can hear that the person is talking and even perceive the pauses where you should chime in with a well-placed head nod or an uh-huh, but that is not the mental process of listening and you won't gain anything from it. Do you ever focus on the way a person dresses, looks, or talks instead of what they are saying? Listening requires self-awareness. There are many benefits that come from working with a diverse group of people, but those benefits are only realized when people listen and learn from each other. This does not mean that you will agree on every issue. In fact, that is exactly when you are likely to be exposed to new perspectives and new information. Do you ever think about what you're going to say while the other person is talking? If so, you are not alone. Stephen Covey, the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, wrote, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. The problem with this is that we miss the opportunity to learn valuable information from others when we listen only with the intent to reply. When we are talking, we can only repeat what we already know. But when we are listening, we have the opportunity to learn something new. And that is why effective leaders engage in active listening. Active listening makes people feel heard. According to Kahn and Abigail in their textbook, Managing Conflict Through Communication, the feeling of being truly heard is so close to the feeling of being loved that most people cannot tell the difference. This is a strong statement. 
You can imagine then that active listening can strengthen relationships, whether they be personal relationships or workplace relationships. Active listening creates an inclusive environment where everyone's voice can be heard. Active listening also builds trust and loyalty, and that is the mark of an effective leader. Active listening also ensures understanding. Asking follow-up questions and responding with summarizing statements to ensure understanding are essential components of active listening. This type of listening reveals new information and new perspectives, and it alerts you to opportunities for innovation. Different perspectives provide new insights to old problems, and good leaders use their listening skills to make connections with people as well as between people that can help each other, which creates a sense of community. That brings us to our second silent aspect, of effective communication for leadership, which is nonverbal communication. Active listening requires that you listen with your eyes as well as your ears. To be a good listener, you must be attentive to nonverbal communication. As much as 93% of the emotional meaning in a message is conveyed through nonverbal communication. Let that sink in a minute. Leaders need to be able to gauge the emotions of others. And paying attention to their nonverbal cues is the key to identifying the issues that are most important to people. Bear in mind that nonverbal communication is a two way street. Back and forth nonverbal communication happens simultaneously. As you read the body language, facial expressions, and vocal tone of others, you convey your own at the same time. The first axiom of communication states that one cannot not communicate. This means that there are messages conveyed by what we do as well as what we don't do. There is communication in what is said, how it is said, as well as what is not said. So when you're practicing your listening skills, remember that your nonverbal cues either validate that you are listening or they contradict that you are listening and people are inclined to believe your nonverbal communication. Researchers are concerned that our heavy use of digital content is affecting and maybe weakening our ability to read nonverbal cues. So when you are interpreting nonverbal communication, try to monitor all of these things as a whole. Facial expressions, gestures, body posture, eye contact or lack thereof, vocal tone, timing or changes in rate, and space or the amount of social distance the person prefers to maintain. To conclude, when it is your turn to talk, use all that you have learned while listening to create a message that will inspire others to listen to you. By mastering the silent aspects of leadership, you are preparing yourself to add value to the lives of your audience, and really only then will you be equipped to be their leader. Thank you for listening.